And the numbers are rolling. Good afternoon there, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Ow! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> and please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be reading today via Berean. Keep an eye on me in the scriptures because sometimes I go too quickly and I make mistakes sometimes. Okay. Today is the 8th. Today is the 8th. Talking about the beautiful woman in comparison to what wisdom is. Proverbs 8, verses 13 on to verse 21 from your authorized version of the scriptures. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What is evil? In this context, pride. First thing that's mentioned. Ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. I will be like the Most High. The sin that got the anointed cherub demoted, as it were, <laughs> Not really, I mean, he's still the anointed cherub, but, um, yeah. Pride is the very first thing mentioned. You know, I, I got a pride problem. Yeah. Praise the Lord, I get rebuked on that quite often. Anyway, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What is that? Pride. And arrogancy and the evil way Jesus Christ he is the truth uh, he is the way the truth excuse me and the life no man cometh unto the Father but by him the way which was originally what the faith that was once delivered unto the Saints called the way hmm. Fear the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. So see, Paul tells us we are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good, and there is none good but God. Okay? Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom, which is peaceable pure, easily to be entreated. But the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, devilish. Hmm. Counsel is mind and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. But today, the prince of the power of the air is the one who is in control of the governments. Allowed such for judgment upon the people. Hmm. But see, a nation that truly follows the Lord, there isn't a nation on this planet, on planet Earth today, that truly, wholly follows the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. There isn't. There will be, but there isn't. There are many out there that call them the little Christian nation. The, the, look at the nation of the Vatican. <laughs> Give me a break. Okay? Israel. Israel. If they really followed the God of their fathers, they would be saints. They would be all, as they would say to you, Messianic Jews. Okay? If God, like the Lord said, if God was your father, you would love me. And Israel Jewry in its totality today, not individually, not individually, but in its totality, Jewry has rejected their Mashiach. Okay? 
By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. And the judges of the earth today? See, if someone has wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, these attributes, because especially today, because when you come to the cross, when you go to the Lord, His way, He seals you with Himself. Okay? These are at your fingertips. But not by coercion. Remember that. Okay? I love them that love me. We love the Lord because He first loved, past tense, us. And gave. Okay? I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. He's not that hard to find. <laughs> He's not that hard to find. But see, the problem always comes in that what Christ do you want to find? The one who is or the one who ain't? And what happens most of the time is y'all look for the one who ain't. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. And what are these riches? My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. See, Satan, with his religion, Christianity, offers you substance of worldly things and means and justification. The end justifies the means. Oh, wow, to indulge in these things, contrary to Scripture. Whereas the Lord, when you do it his way, walk according to his statutes, rightly divided, of course, that does not mean that you discount things that are in the Old Testament. Today, as you're going to see, we're going to be primarily in the Old Testament. Okay? All right? Instruction and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, then fine gold and my revenue than choice silver. The payout, as it were. I lead in the way of righteousness. Who's righteousness? The Lord's righteousness. In the midst of the paths of judgment. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. Whoa, 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 hold on, Spunky Bridges. Look at that verse. I lead in the way of righteousness. He is the way, the truth, and the, the life. Okay? Narrow is the way. Straight is the gate that leadeth unto life. But broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. Okay, that's from the Sermon on the Mount even. Okay? I lead in the way of righteousness. There is only one way. There is only one God. There is only one truth. And only one place where you're going to find it. The authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst, middle thereof, of the paths of judgment. Paths of judgment, meaning more than one. You know, you, you guys who say, don't judge me. For <laughs> that stupid, and I'm being polite, uh, cross-dressing Calvinist. I <laughs> can't forget, I can't unsee that. Thankfully, that devil has uh, pretty much, from his own channel, removed the pictures of himself in drag. <laughs> Can't unsee that. But, you know, you guys just say, well, the only one who can judge me is the Lord. You, you know, you, you yourself are executing a form of judgment when you say such st stupid things out of context. How does the Lord judge you? Through the Scripture. And see, if you judge yourself through the Scripture first, you judge others off of this perfect standard that you have. But most of the time, most of you people, you are your own perfect standard. So this tells us that there are many paths of judgment. Interesting. Interesting. And keep in mind, whenever you hear someone 
you know, don't judge me. It's always, always to justify a sin. There may be an occasion where, when it comes to proper context, where someone, you know, let's, f for example, you're a vegan, I'm a meatitarian, okay? And um, you want to do your thing, and I'm going to do my thing. For me to judge you because of what you're eating, then, then, then you could probably, well, hey, dude, you're judging me because I'm a vegan and you're a meatitarian. Uh, doesn't that say in Romans we ain't supposed to do that? You're right, okay? But see, when people bring up the don't judge me, that's not the context that they're using it in. It's like, hey, back off. Who are you to tell me what I'm doing is wrong? I'm, 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 that, 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 this tells me. Well, that, that, that. <laughs> you got to remember, our, our enemies, some of them are very intelligent. They're trained by Jesuits, of course. But you got to remember, when it comes to them, to their antagonism... They usually turn into adolescent teenagers with the playground mentality. The, you know, nah, 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 you can't do it because you can't do it, blah, blah, blah. And they turn into children. Children of the devil. And that's something. Don't, don't, don't forget that. And when you encounter that, when you encounter devilish adolescence, <laughs> in people who are adults and serving their father, the devil, don't, don't fret it. I, I mean, yeah, it, it, can, it can wear on you. It can wear on you. Oh, but try to keep that in the back of your mind when dealing with these devils. Okay? Verse 21. Let's read 20 again and 21. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. You want the right way? Here it is. Rightly divided, of course. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Our Lord Jesus Christ is that pearl of great price. Okay, some like to argue that it's the authorized version. The authorized version is that which points to the actual Lord who is. Okay, okay, all right. But yes, we have this treasure, the Lord Jesus Christ, in earthen vessels. If you didn't boot the door and climb up some other way, but you went the way of the cross, which is death to yourself contrition, and it's going to scare the hell out of you. And see, in that moment is when you call out to the Lord. And see, those of you who are against that, you're not saved. You're not saved, because you, you know, you are your own God. <laughs> okay? But see, the fear of the Lord, it's, it's um, my fruit, verse 19, my fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver, anything that the world gives you. But see, what happens is you go to Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29, okay? Proverbs 29, verses 23 to 27. What was the first thing that was mentioned about uh, the fear of the Lord that we're supposed to hate? Huh? What was the first thing that was mentioned? In verse 13 in Proverbs 18, uh, Proverbs 8, excuse me, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What's the first thing that's mentioned? Pride. Pride. Verse 23 and Proverbs 29. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. You know, you boot the door and climb up some other way. He heareth cursing and bewrayeth it not. 
That is beyond mere curse words such as F-bombs and the S-word. Cursing, true cursing, damning, God forbid, damning God as if we could do so. Okay? Yes, that en encompasses profanity, but it goes deeper than that. Again, I, I'm, I'm brought back to the, the Catholics who told that their God is a cookie and they receive Christ by eating him. And as we proved in uh, Monday's video, that cannibalism was a form of judgment against his people, Israel. So you Christians, you know, you Catholics out there who think that your Jesuit priest, Abracadabra, puts Christ in a cookie, you're under a form of judgment. Okay? Whoso is partnered with a thief hateth his own soul. When you are your own God and you dictate what you're going to believe and what you're going to uh, follow in the scriptures. And you got to remember too, God doesn't force you. This, this cannot be stressed enough because you hear, I mean, for example, the word sovereign, uh, sovereign, sovereign, sovereignty or whatever. I, can, I can't even pronounce it. It's not in scripture. The word sovereign, sovereignty, is not in the scripture. Find it. Find it. Oh, it, it, well, well, one second, one second. Yes, sovereign, sovereignty is not in scripture. Now, you can argue, well, the, the thing, the meat of it is, yes, but the word itself is not. And who's the one who throws around the word sovereign and sovereignty? Quite a bit. Oh, that'd be Calvinists. And see, they talk about the sovereignty of God apart, absent from the will of man. Classic, as it were, Calvinism kind of blurs that line. But the Calvinism that is around today that justifies sin, <laughs> okay? Anyway, verse 24, Whoso is partnered with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing and berayeth it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord may shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord, and every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. We saved at the judgment seat, you lost eventually at the great white throne. An unjust man and is, ab is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Fear of man. And see, what happens is, what happens is, you got a government that tells you one thing, but you have God, the Father, tell you something else. Perfect example. Perfect example. Abortion. Abortion's murder. Okay? And there are those out there, well, it's the woman's right. Hmm. It is, huh? There are those out there like that wicked devil, Dave Chappelle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that guy. If you haven't, good. He, he's a disgusting individual. But um, he's like, like one of the many out there who's like, well, men have no part in that. And you know what? I'd say to that, okay. But who does? God. God the Father has part in that. And guess what? God the Father. God the Father. You get it? Our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, the thing about abortion. Okay. They say, well, it's the woman's right. Mm. Okay? And, well, in the incident of incest and the, the health of the woman, then abortion is okay. Mm. You read about how, in several passages of Scripture, how, um, who was it? Was it Rachel? Yeah, it was Rachel who travailed in birth and died giving birth to Benjamin? And also... You know, uh, in the incident of rape, 
I know of women who um, had rape babies, as it were. It's not the child's fault. It's not the child's fault. Abortion, no matter how you slice it, is a selfish act. And I, not me, the Lord will impress upon you, woman, that when you are with child, your life is no longer your own in the fact that you have another. And the mother, the mother, you know, the lioness thing is to be there for the child. So when convenience comes, then you decide to kill it. Hmm. But see, God says one thing, and man says something else. The question becomes, what do you do, Christian? You know what some do? They go to, and I've encountered this, and um, I will be honest with you. I, especially nowadays, I do not react well to when I encounter this. And praise the Lord, I have not encountered this for a while. But when you go, I, I don't. I, I jump on this like crazy, and I get pretty um, aggressive on it because it's, 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 it's so stupid how they do it. See, in order to justify something that is contrary to Scripture, Christianity, which is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, will come to the... I've experienced this. In order to justify what man says, that is contrary to Scripture. Okay? For example, the diaper, Scripture tells you. Cover your lip, not your face. Not this, okay? Scripture tells you, okay? Scripture, the Lord, cover your lip, not your nose, so you don't breathe in your own toxins. But the Jesuit order, the government run by the Jesuit order, cover your nose. What do you do? Well, that, that's in Leviticus, by the way. Go find it yourself, okay? Hey, if someone want to put that in the comment section, go right ahead. But, what do you do? Fear man bringeth a snare. See, the government tells you to do one thing. And then God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Word, tells you to do something else. Which one do you follow? And then, and then see these cute Christians, you go to them, and they come to uh, 1 Peter 2, verses, let's get context, 9 on to verse 17. But ye are a cho chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers, and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Fear man bringeth a snare. How can ye believe, those of you who seek honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? And that which is highly esteemed among men? is an abomination in the sight of God. Mm. Mm. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Conversation encompasses word, but also how you behave. Okay, dear brother corrected me on that a little while ago. Amen. Amen. Conversation does not just, because you've heard of the term body language, right? Uh, there are some, there are people out there who can get a point across without saying one word, and it's all demonstrated in the language of their physicality, their body language. Okay, so con conversation intuits more than just verbal. Remember that. That whereas they speak against you as evil doers, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Yeah, these guys at the great white throne. 
Jesuit order was telling all of us to do one thing and your servants, they stuck by you. That, see, that, that testimony, that brother, sister, that we today in these last days are supposed to exhibit for the lost, okay? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Who are you proving that to? Okay. Now, now, pay attention. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king is supreme or unto governors, as unto them <laughs> that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Hmm. Another example. They come to this. I encountered this uh, when I was a babe. What babe? You know, like 16 years ago when I was a babe. I had this little old lady who had kind of a shaky disorder tell me that, you know, well, we, you know, in order to be a pastor or preacher or whatever, you need the credentials. I said, what do you mean? It's like you need to be accredited. By who? By you need a college degree. It's like, really? Well, where does that say that? And they... She quoted this. She quoted verse 13. Hmm. And, but see, when you read, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And see, some of these guys will say, well, it's evil not to go to a Jesuit-run Bible college a cemetery school where you come out saying, yea, hath God said, any Bible will do. And they say, well, if you don't go that way, you're committing evil. See, this is talking about, oh, Hark, can you hear the siren in the background? This is talking about, like, you know, authority of the police. You know, someone breaks in, arrest them. Someone kills another guy, arrest them, send him to jail, or kill him himself, or whatever. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? But see, Christians will come to this and twist it in order to justify things that are clearly contrary to Scripture. What do you do? What do you do when man tells you to do one thing and Scripture tells you something totally different? What do you do? What do you do? For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Aha! Foolish men. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. To behave foolishly is to what? To behave, act, to have your conversation as if you say in your heart there is no God but your lips profess that you believe in God. Which one? You see? See? See a little bit of context. As free, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Hide behind the truth. All things are lawful for me. But you do it to justify sinful things. That is that verse right there. Using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness. Well, it's a tradition, man. We've done it. I did it all ever since I was a kid. There's nothing wrong with it. You guys know what I'm referring to, but I'm not going to actually verbalize it because you get it. See, you're using truth, and it is undeniable truth. All things are lawful for you. Yes, we saints can do anything that a lost person can do. Us saints could even do things that Catholics do. And we, we, we won't go any farther on that one, will we? 
as free, and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men. And we have a video on the channel here, which will be in the description box for you, where we go over this very verse. How do you honor all men? We're ambassadors for Christ, the actual Christ of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. How we align ourselves with the Scriptures and live our life according to the Scriptures. For those who are without, when they see us having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. Gentiles there, yes, Peter is referring to Gentiles, the kindred, yes, uh, you know, uh, Ham and Japheth and stuff like that. But, in context, it's being used as those who are without, who are not saved. Okay? It's twofold. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, be, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay? So we honor all men by living truth. Speaking truth. How do you love your enemies? You give them truth. Okay? Uh, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Okay? All right? Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Yes! Yes, we are to abide by the laws of the government. Yes, we are. But there again, when you have a governmental law, like look at the book of Daniel, dude. Look at the book of Daniel. All right? When the guys trying to get Daniel in trouble went to the king, who was it? Was it, uh, was it Darius? Someone can correct me on that. But they went to the king. It's like, hey. If anyone make prayers or makes a petition to any god except you, that guy who does that shall be cast into a lion's den. And what does Daniel do? He feared the Lord. Okay, and these guys, insulted with mischief, went to the king, got a bogus law passed that said if you bow to anyone except to the king as God, that you're going to be in trouble. What does Daniel do? He opens up his door like the first thing he did. He's like he prayed to the Father. And of course the guys who knew that he was going to do that because they know where your loyalty lies or where your heart is fixed, I should say, because loyalty, I don't think appears in Scripture. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But they knew that he wasn't going to do that. So they used that, they used that law, which they knew was contrary to the truth, to get Daniel. What do you do? What do you do? What did Daniel do? Hmm. What did Daniel do? What did Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? <laughs> We're not going to worship your gods. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar set up a phallus, and he's like, hey, bow to that, and the, the children of Israel were like, are you crazy, man? Yeah, you know, a phallus, beg your pardon, being gruff about that, but you know that thing that you, that steeple you have on your church building? Okay? What'd they do? Hmm? And, and you think that today, that as a Christian, and you go to, to and see these guys always go to the Sermon on the Mount. You know, the Sermon on the Mount and Acts chapter 2, those two places in Scripture, the devils really, really, really like to tweak and twist and use to deceive people. Because remember, the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Acts chapter 2, it was this dispensation, but the kingdom of God, the spiritual, at the first was being primarily offered exclusively unto the Hebraic Jewish people. There were no Gentiles present in Acts chapter 2. Those were languages that the Hebraic Jews, being born in those nations, spake. you got to remember, um, outside America, it is not an uncommon thing for other kindreds, other nations, to be bilingual. 
Okay, looking into the Shemitic nation of Japan. Okay, um, English is a standard kind of thing that they they teach you know their children. And then again, you got to remember the Japanese are Shemitic. Okay, they're they're not Hebraic. They're Shemitic. But remember, the Hebrews came out of Shem. Okay, and I tell you, very very you know, kind of wab it there. Um, trying to witness to Japanese people. Um, they, they, they're of Shem. They're of Shem. If any of you have tried to actually witness onto the Japanese people, um, you, you, you discover right away that, wow, this is... And the Japanese do not have that kind of banter that the Hebraic Jew has when they see you a goyim come to them and at the first they're like oh it's so cute this is, has been primarily in my experience where you know you're a Gentile and you go to a Hebraic Jew and you're going to presume to tell them about their God and at the very first it's like oh you goyim you so cute you think you're going to tell me about my God and then you tie things in and then they <laughs> you know enemies of the gospel for your sake okay um, the Japanese don't have they don't have that. Um, they don't. And um, a lot of Japanese are indifferent. And don't, uh, not all of them, but I've learned that a lot of the Japanese kindred will come at you like that. Will kind of, kind of deflective in a way. Not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, it is a true thing where you might have heard that the Japanese is, Japan is a country where not everyone usually say what they really mean. But, oh, interesting. Th sorry, I, I'm sorry. I, just, I had to throw that in a little web. You need to know that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 5. Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Okay? A man's wisdom. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Now, contrast, verse 2. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, comma, and that in regard of the oath of God. See, when the king is... If we had a nation that was of the Lord Jesus Christ, a nation of saints who actually worshipped the true Lord Jesus Christ of the scriptures, things would be different, okay? Things would be different. So this is telling us that the king was supposed to be what? And that in regard of the oath of God. The king's commandments were supposed to be based off of what God said. Again, what happens when the government says one thing and God says something else? Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Go your own way. Many of them went away. This is a hard saying. Stand not in an evil thing. Something that's contrary to the scripture. For he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Who's the he? The king? You can argue, yes, but no context. Is what? For he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Regard of the oath of God. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. The he there is God, not the king. Yes, Jesus Christ, he is king of kings, lord of lords. Okay, but in this context, okay? Where the word of a king is, there's power. Word of king. Oh, yeah, and you can tie that. Uh, be cutesy with King James Version. Go ahead. Okay. Where the word of a king is, there's power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Okay. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Hmm. A wise man, someone who fears the Lord. Hmm. Go back to uh, Proverbs 8 now. 
go back to Proverbs 8, and let's finish up with the, the glowing um, thing here in Proverbs 8. This, uh, what is it, doxology, I believe you call it? Verses 32 and 36. Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, fear the Lord, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Jesus Christ, he is the door. Open up the doors of heaven and shower blessing upon you by keeping his word. Be divided, of course. For whoso findeth me, findeth life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Look around you. Especially around uh, Halloween. They love death. On our front door we have that verse. All they that hate me love death. Obsessed with death. Like the magician guys. Uh, that Seriano guy. Uh, uh, magic, magicians, okay? They, uh, this thing with skulls and death, uh, skull and crossbone, you know, death, warning, stay away from it. Hmm. I'll go back to Ecclesiastes 8, verses 11 on to verse 13. What happens? Okay? What happens? What happens, okay? See, God is not slack in the way that you and I count slackness, but wants all men to come to repentance. God, yes, God wants everyone to be saved. Does that mean that everybody is going to be saved? Of course not. Why? Because God is a God of specificity. Okay? God is specific. God is exclusive. Okay? He has requirements. You are required to go the way of the cross. But see, boot the door and climb up some other way, you're a thief and a robber. But see, because things don't happen muy rapido sometimes, what happens? Ecclesiastes 8, 11 on to verse 13. For you brethren who know, Remember how I told you yesterday when you combine, when you uh, cross-reference the sevens? What does that mean? Proverbs 7, Ecclesiastes 7, um, Song of Solomon 7. And you're just like, wow, you know, get yourself the scriptures side by side and do that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Okay? A lot of fruit come from that, brethren, like I told you. That does take labor, though. That does take labor. Verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Warning. No, 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 let's finish this. Okay. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, brethren, brethren, I see these guys getting away with murder, teaching people blatant heresy, clearly contradicting scripture, not rightly dividing the word of truth, and people are gobbling it up, okay, and we, you know, you can make, Lord can guide you and lead you to make so many videos, and yet people don't want it, because like it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, okay, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, you gotta remember, 
Yet surely I know that it will be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. You you guys keep... You keep, you know, the, the, us saints out there are going to warn people. Uh, and of course, this is your hour in the power of darkness. People don't want to hear the truth. They want to have their ears, you know, tickled and itched and stuff like that. And the you devils come around and, and do that for them. But see, brethren, you can't be disheartened. We got to remember, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Why? Because he feareth not before God. They're, they're getting away with this stuff today. You get these guys infiltrating, trying to infiltrate the body of Christ and affix themselves to a demographic within the um, thing which is called Christianity, another demon nation. Okay? These, these guys are going to pay big time. They are. They are. And we, <laughs> we have to remember that. Because, you know, you, you spend, you know, the Lord will give you a moment to share truth with someone. And, you know, you get to scrolling on that YouTube boy. And then, lo and behold, you come across somebody who tickles your, your ear and, and tells you things that gratify your flesh. And away they go, and the moment's lost. At least for you. But what happens? Because judgment, you know, um, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. In whose eyes? In whose eyes, by the way? Psalm 115. Yeah, in whose eyes, by the way? <laughs> whose eyes? The Lord is not slack. As some men count slackness. We're going to look at that because I quoted it a couple times. But here in Psalm 115, Psalm 115, verses 1 on the verse et. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory for thy mercy and for thy true sake. And there is only not one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. Whose name? Jahashahuhi. <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break. One name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Okay? Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? That uh, de Gracie guy, Neil de Gracie, you know, Minded of him. It's like, I see suffering. I see death. God is not all good. Yes, he is. But see, God doesn't force people. God has allowed man because God doesn't want a robot, Calvinist. Uh, God has allowed man to choose his own way. Why does God allow that? I mean, and, 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 you know, why, why does God... Allow. I'm writing down references for the description box. You know, someone as brilliant as that Neil deGracy guy, and he's a brilliant man, um, can make such a classic blunder that, number one, he thinks man is good. That's, that's the name, main one. That man is good. Okay? And doesn't intuit that man has free will and man has brought upon himself. Okay? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. Tie that in with Ecclesiastes 8 like we already did. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. And did we not just read that the revenues are better than gold and silver? Fear the Lord. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They have mouths, but they speak not. Talking about... Textually, contextually, talking about an actual idol. But then again, the Jesuit, at war and without will or grace, that you, you said that sitting there, that came to your head, didn't it? Didn't it? <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> Bold streams, brother. <laughs> 
Beg your pardon. Okay. But, all right, they have mouths, but they speak not. They have eyes, they have they, but they see not. The Jesuit has no mind of their own, but they are a sword in the hand of their provincial. And they are taught to believe that the white they see is black if the hierarchical church so orders it or so defines it. That's a quote from Ignatius de Loyola himself. Mm. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. They have feet, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Now, this, this is clearly, obviously talking about a statue like a marionette or the little Buddha thing or whatever. Okay? Obviously. But see, also to instruct us in righteousness, someone like an infiltrator, they have no mind of their own. They're brilliant men, but they're following orders. Okay? They're dead set. You can't reach with them. You can't reach them. You can't reach. It can't be reasoned with. It can't be bargained with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Unfortunately, there are those of you who might know what movie that is a quote from. But see, the enemy and the Jesuit order, the Jesuit order, who is the enemy, you know, Satan's army, um, that's not what they're like. They get so far gone in their doctrines of the Jesuit. Okay? And see, that's what we're dealing with a lot of. And they are the ones that are making these people two more full the child of hell than themselves. Ooh. <laughs> they that make them are like unto them. Twofold more the child of hell than themselves. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Got a big smile. It's and tickle your ear, right? A little doesn't hurt, right? A little doesn't hurt. Uh, look at verses 16 and verse 18 here in Psalm 115. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. Look at verse 17. Now, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Once you dead, it, I mean, uh, uh, there is no discharge in that war. Ecclesiastes 8 today, okay? Uh, you're death, okay? Once you dead, you're dead, okay? You're dead. You're going to either go to be with the Lord or you're going to burn. Okay, there is no option C, Andy, you idiot. Okay, <laughs> you Catholics. Okay, I'm being polite when I say that. Okay, but you, this, this life that you have is where the decision will be made. It's not that you save yourself. God doesn't force things onto you. I can't tell you that enough because you listen to certain King James Bible even Christians. They tell you that, well, you, you don't have a choice in certain things. Okay? The Lord does it for you as far as believing or having faith. It's not your faith. <laughs> okay? Hence the lie of the Calvinist. All right? But once you're dead, this, in this life, this life is where it's going to be determined whether you're going to be in heaven with the Lord or you're going to be in hell with all your friends are going to be there too. You're on the highway to hell. Okay? This life. That's why this life, that's what makes this life important. Okay? That's what makes this life important. But the dead praise not the Lord. Comma. Neither any that go down into silence. So yes, dead, you're dead, you're dead. Neither any that go down into silence. Now we read about hell where, um, where their worm dieth not and the fire uh, is not quenched and there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
People are in hell wailing and gnashing of teeth, burning eternally and not dying. Okay? So going down to sil into silence. You get the thing here that this is twofold. When you're dead, you're dead. Okay? You, 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 your chances are gone. But the dead praise not the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Yes, dead people don't praise the Lord. Physically, actually dead. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 3. And you hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Unsaved people. You're dead, but yet you're alive. Kind of like Satan, who was and wasn't and will not be. I just totally botched that. Someone help me out with that in the <laughs> comment section, if you will. Uh, but um, until the Lord saves you, you're dead in trespasses and sins. The dead praise not the Lord, comma, neither any that go down into silence. But you see Christians with their, you know, CCM, they're not praising the true Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that. Okay? And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And until the Lord saves you, you're dead. Dead into what? Trespasses and sins. Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist is what? To be against and to replace. All things are lawful for you, right? All things are lawful for you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and that's true. Amen. Amen. Undeniable. But see, there are those of you out there who hide behind that to justify things that you shouldn't. Shame on you. Lord rebuke you for doing that. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind... And we're by nature children of wrath as were others. Hmm. And then go to now, uh, where are we? Where are we? Okay, we just did that. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, I might have messed that up. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's see. Let's see. Did I write down the right, wrong one? I sometimes do that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. No, I didn't. Okay, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, just one verse. Verse 14. But the natural, unregenerate, but the natural man receiveth not the capital S spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned and then go to John 3, John 3, 10 and 12. John 3, 10 and 12. And this, this is right here. This right here. John 3, verses 10 on to verse 12. Talking to Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a guy who was well-versed in the law. Okay? And I, yes, I do believe that Nicodemus is up there in heaven. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We have evidences of this because you at least see, and, and remember, our beloved Nicodemus never scripturally was able to shake that stigma of he that went to Jesus by night. He went to Jesus by night. Afraid of what? The fear of man will bring a snare. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel? 
Aren't you a rabbi? And knowest not these things? He, he didn't. He knew the law. He knew the law like the rich young ruler, like that twit uh, son of Ishmael, you know, trying to say that Jesus didn't call himself God with the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler didn't have eyes to see that that was the Mashiach. Okay, we've talked about that before. Anyway, but see, Nicodemus knew the law, but he didn't have eyes to see. Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Verse 12. If I have told you earthly things, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? If I have told you of earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Jesus is. He is God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? If you don't believe about earthly things, then how are you that the Lord will address in Scripture? How are you supposed to believe in heavenly things? And in context, this is talking about what? Being born again. Who makes the distinction there, buddy? Pal? Yeah, I know, again, you're not my pal. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Who makes the distinction? Hmm? Oh, you do, because you take on someone else's persona, huh? And Jude, Jude, one verse, Jude, verse 10, But these unregenerate people speak evil of things which they know not, but what they know naturally, earthly, sensual, devilish, as brute beasts. In those things, they corrupt themselves. What things? wisdom of this world which is what earthly sensual and devilish and um and where uh, wait, 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 where is that brother um in sec second peter chapter two um where the lord where he says um uh, uh he's not slack oh one second gotta find it second peter two of uh, second peter three Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, because uh, judgment against uh, an evil work is not executed speedily. Where is your God? Huh? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, usward meaning mankind, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And interestingly enough, Verse 12 in Second Peter chapter 2. But these as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And see, the thing we got to remember, dear brethren, dear friend, in Jeremiah chapter 23, just two verses, um, God is close to all. He's right there. You don't got to go to a church building to find God. That dead on the marquee out there of the mess, mess a lot or whatever, the Methodist uh, church building, they still got that, I think. Um, where are you going? Directions inside. Go to a church building. That's Catholicism. 
Okay, but in Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 23 and 24, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Hmm. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? See, do I not fill heaven and earth? God is big, huge. Bigger than our little finite minds can imagine. The enormity of God. Okay? The enormity of Him. And see, look at that verse. Am I a God at hand? Rather, am I in your image? Meaning, what? We'll get to this. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? And verse 24 explains, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? These Christians put on the facade, the, the outer adornment, and they go and act all oh, in their church building, and then they leave, and then they're right back as the whale, right? But right here, am I a God at hand? What does that mean? Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Psalm 50, verses 18 unto 21. When thou sawest the thief, then thou consentest with him, and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Here it is. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. The enormity of God. And see, what Christianity has done has made God into their own personal image. Yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, God was manifest in the flesh. But you see, what God did not do, he never sinned. Okay? See, flesh of man is derived of the earth. Okay? God in the flesh of man kept the law perfectly, never sinned. Hence, the sinful flesh was sanctified Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. See how that works? Okay? All right? And see, when you think like the Jesuit priest, call Christ down from heaven to make him in your image. Who's bigger? You or him? Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Roll that around in your brain case. <laughs> the next time you want to justify sin, saint, hmm? you keep that in mind, boy. But what happens too? What, what, see, the devil, you gotta be, gotta be, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices, brethren. What do devils do? Second Cur ah, oh, second, I always do that. Colossians 2, 6 on the 9. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Choice. God doesn't hold a loaded gun to your head to make you do things. Satan doesn't hold a loaded gun to your head and make you do things. You have to make the right choices. Can you do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. Not even Paul could do that. He even admitted that in the Ro in Romans 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, abounding therein, with thanksgiving. Beware. 
lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the love of man's wisdom, and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Movements of the world. We've always done that when we were kids. So we're going to continue to do it, even though it's Roman Catholic. Or whatever you want to weave in there. All things are lawful. Are you brought under the power of any? Isaiah 2. One verse. Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2. Verse 22. Now see, by the foolishness of preaching, God ordained by the foolishness of preaching... Foolish in whose eyes? The Lord? No. <laughs> Obviously. In whose eyes? The world. Okay? God has ordained that man, that he would use man to preach. Okay? He doesn't need man. Okay? Remember that. God doesn't. We need God. God don't need us. Okay? But he has ordained that man would, be, would preach. And he uses man. Yes. When you are dependent on man, when you exalt man, you know, the skin suit. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? You know, the, the, that big guy who's in front of you who might pummel you to death, you gotta remember, okay? Um, Fretting, fearing someone who is as mortal as you, who also is going to give an account of themselves before God. Most likely you're a saint and you're going to be at the great white throne of judgment. But, um, you know, um, keep that in mind the next time if you're ever in a situation. Um, you don't be brazen about it, but you got to remember, this is why you don't fret men. Okay? The, you know, you're just as frail as I am. Unless you're a Terminator or a replicant, right? And those things don't exist. Yet, <laughs> some will argue. But, see, see for man whose breath is in his nostrils. For what is he to be accounted of? Isaiah 8. Check this out. Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. You notice this? You notice this, brethren? See, when you take the time in scriptures as we are as we ought to, every day the Lord can reveal something to you. Isaiah 8, 11 on the 20. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, These people, say not a confederacy. To all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. How can ye believe, ye that seek honor one from another, and not the honor that cometh from God only? That which is highly esteemed in the sight of men is an abomination of the sight of God, in the sight of God. Okay? Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, to both the houses of Israel, for a jinn and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall, and be broken and snared, and be taken. Well, why? Oh, they want their idols. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob. 
and will look for him. Oh, you can tie so many things into that. Like America. America is not a godly nation. God of this world, but the God of the authorized version, the God of Scripture, give me a break. Never was. That's a Masonic document. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, for from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Oh, with what we already tied in? They have eyes, but they see not. The living God unto those who are dead in trespasses and sins? But see, when you fear man, the dead, uh, the, the rich that, um, oh, what is it, brother? The rich that uh, oppresseth the rich is like a uh, rain that leaveth no food. I can't think of it right offhand. Okay? The pot calling the kettle black, like it's addressed in uh, Romans chapter 2. You got a devil trying to tell you what is godly. Kind of like Trump selling the authorized version. It's good that the authorized version is getting um, getting known out there, but eh, we've talked about that. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. In Jesus Christ, he is the light of the world. Look at that. The law and the testimony. You could, with that verse, the law, the Old Testament. Test, the law, the testimony, the New Testament. Just saying. See, encompasses both. Rightly divided. Rightly divided. You're not going to get away from rightly dividing the word of truth. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Hello, Christianity. Okay? All right, now, all right. Second Kings, chapter 17. Second Kings, chapter 17. Only as the Lord has allows me breath, these are things we got to talk about. Second Kings 17, 9 on to verse 16. You want some good instruction in righteousness. Okay, you read uh, 2 Kings 17 sometime. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord thy God. Can anyone hide in secret and God not see him? Christian, you put on the shoe, you know, the S-H-E-W, that you're, you know, you're this uh, holy roller in your church building. Outside, you can put on a happy face. But when it's just you, the four walls, the ceiling and floor, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman to the fence city. And they set them up images on groves in every high hill and under every Christmas tree. Oh, that doesn't say that. Excuse me. And under every green tree. I had to. Take your part. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets, and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Beware. The same one spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the room, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, I'm not after Christ. Notwithstanding, 
they will not hear. All things will offer for me. You're right. Amen. But see, you're using that to hide behind it. You're hiding behind it to justify something. But harden their necks like to the neck of their fathers that they did not believe the Lord their God. And, and what are we reading to here? 16. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Hmm. And, and Isaiah, uh, wait, wait, wait. Psalm 18 now? Psalm 18, Psalm 18, verses 16 on to 26. Psalm 18, verses 16 on to 26. He sent from above. He took me and drew me out of many waters. And you read Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Waters are likened unto people. Context describes what, how, how it's used. But look, let's read this. He sent from above and took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Hmm. I wonder what waters in this context is a reference onto. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. And you can also tie the exodus into this, of course. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Dispensational difference. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed, with an S, me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed with an S, a verb, me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands and his eyesight. Dispensational difference. Under the law, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there, nor the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. An upright man, thou wilt chew thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt chew thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt chew thyself froward. Psalm 106. You know that old saying? Be careful what you wish for. You know, everything that I got, I asked for. In everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me and everything. That includes the good. There's no good but God. The bad and the ugly. Psalm 106, verse 15, one verse. Let's read verse 14 and 15. But lusted exceedingly in the wilderness... And tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request. Oh, but sent leanness into their soul. You know, in 2 Thessalonians, they receive not the love of the truth, so God shall send them strong delusion. Why? Because they have not received the love of the truth. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, dear, dear person, whoever you is, be very careful. I'll never forget, it was that thing, Jake the Snake Roberts, if you don't know who he is, good. He said, hey, everything I, I got, I asked for, okay? 
a true statement from a lost man. Careful what you ask for. Because he might just give it to you. And send leanness into your soul. <laughs> Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Again, verses 12 and 13. 12 and 13. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the Son of Man which shall be made as grass? And forgettest the Lord thy Maker that hath stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and hath feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy? And where is the fury of the oppressor? Fearing man? Fear of man bring a, a snare? But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? Fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. The forward mouth do I hate, the evil way. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And see, the further we go, this man-fearing is being pushed. It has been for centuries, but it's getting bolder. It's getting bolder and it's getting more pronounced, especially within the realms of Christianity and the new denominations that are rising up. Matthew 10, verse 24 and verse 28. Matthew 10, 24 and 28. And this is something that we all have to remember. Paul had a pride problem himself. You read Acts 21, he had a pride problem. Peter, he feared man. And James, good old James, he played favorites. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. And how much of Christianity brings Christ down into a cookie or makes God into an image of their own making? It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have, call, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call him of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. They shoot themselves on the foot every time, brethren. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach upon the housetops. And now, heretics come to this to try to prove soul annihilationism. That you go to hell, burn up, and that's it. Look at the verse. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able. Not Cain, brother. <laughs> able. He can. Able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He's able to do that. But you read Mark chapter 9, <coughs> where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, he doesn't. See, people will come to this verse and say, see, soul annihilationism. See, you can live as a devil and don't worry. Yeah, you're going to go to hell, but you're going to burn up and then you'll, that'll be it. You'll be gone. No, 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 no. You're going to burn for eternity. You're going to burn for eternity. He's able Abel! Not Cain. Okay? Stop it. <laughs> He's able. He can. <coughs> but we have in Scripture, the smoke of their torment goeth up forever. The worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. Okay? He's able to destroy 
both soul and body in hell. But we have scripture tell us that he's not going to, though he is able to do so. Okay? Watch out again for these, uh, like the uh, Shepherd Chapel idiots. Bollingerites, you know, who say that, uh, you know, who teach soul annihilationism. Revelation chapter 1. Again, you know, so many people make God into their own, they fit God into their own little cubicle and make God into something that he is not. Revelation 1, 11 on verse 18. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. What does that mean? The first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto La Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, the menorah. And in the, oh, wait, wait, no, wait, hold on, forget what I said. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, like uh, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with the golden girdle. Yeah, that might be the candlestick. Yeah, seven candlesticks uh, about the menorah. Anyway, anyway, let's continue. Hey, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool, okay? As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. White like wool. People have come to this and tried to say that Jesus had an afro and tried to twist this to say that Jesus was a Hamite. No. No. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in the furnace and his voice is the sound of many waters. Have you ever seen really fine polished brass? Real brass before it's not black it's kind of olive colored okay it's not Caucasian it's not black okay <laughs> all right and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength Hebrews 4 out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword. Hebrews 4, got to go here. Verse 12. The Word of God, lowercase w, meaning the written word, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the, to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, which is a person, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Back to Revelation 1, verse 17. And you Christians, oh, good. we get up to heaven and we're going to give Jesus a big old bro hug and high five Jesus. And when I saw him, John, the apostle, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. What does that mean? Keys of hell and of death. Jesus Christ is the judge. He is God the Father. Okay? He will send you to hell if he does not save you. And he will send you to hell because you did not choose the fear of the Lord. Because you did not choose the Christ who is. Careful what you wish for there, buddy. Careful what you wish for. Okay? Go to Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. Verses 16 on to 20. 
The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Hegeon Selah. God doesn't hold a gun to your head, neither does the devil. You've got to make the right choices. He doesn't choose for you. You don't save yourself, but he's not going to force his salvation on you at any time. It doesn't, it's never worked that way. Despite what Christianity wants you to believe. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Careful what you wish for. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. But men, mere men, just men. Peter himself, when Cornelius went to bow to him, it's like, stand up, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm a man like you. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Psalm 100. Hopefully we can get through Psalm 100 within the three-hour time limit, you know, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. And this is for you self-theists. And you, you wicked, uh, sleazy believers and Catholics, all of you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us. It is he that hath made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Okay? The focus, he made us and not we ourselves. You shall be as God. Knowing good and evil, Satan tells you. You will be like the Most High. Christianity brings God down and makes them on the same level as themselves. Uh, depending on the denomination, they even put themselves a little higher than God. Yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, Mr. Gracie. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth. To all generations. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Job 15. Job 15. We're almost done. Job 15. Vanity. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Got to remember about Job 15 here. This is Eliaphaz. Eliaphaz. Okay? This is Eliaphaz, who is going to speak truth here that we're going to see. However, you got to remember, you have to remember that they still condemned Job. And we've talked about this in the two part video about Job in the book of questions, about where, yes, Job's three friends, <laughs> friends like that, who needs enemies. <laughs> but Job's three friends spake truth, but yet in the premise of the, of the wrong thing, condemning Job, uh, when Job, in the book of Job, there was no reason for, you know, Satan went to the Lord. It's like, hey, don't you, you're protecting him for not. Take away these things. And the Lord's like, okay, don't hurt him. Don't kill them. Okay? We talk about that in other videos. But you got to remember, Eliaphaz is going to speak truth, but he did it in the wrong premise, meaning he was condemning Job. Job was innocent.
But see, that continual bashing, that continual wearing of the stones, Job faltered and started to puff himself up. We talk about that in the Job videos. That, that, uh, that might be in the uh, description box, okay? But let's continue. Job 15, 30 on to 35. He shall not depart out of darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches. And, the, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity. For vanity shall be his recompense with the sea. Person, place, or thing. You see that? Did you notice that? That's a C, not an S. An S is a verb. A C is a noun. Will be his recompense, his thing. Person, place, or thing. Okay? And vanity, they have eyes and they see not. Mouths have they, but they speak not. They have feet, but they move not. They have to be born of others. Hmm, kind of like a Jesuit provincial. Hmm. It shall be accomplished before his time, and his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the, unripe grape as the vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. Oh, Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Hmm. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. They do this, this right here, just now for the sake of earthly things. There are so many. Kent Helvind. Okay, perfect example. Kent Helvind. Perfect example. Okay, and that guy's not saved. He's a Jesuit. Okay? Every video that guy does if he even makes them anymore, I hope he doesn't. You know, virtually everything that he does, I mean, the older stuff he didn't, like in his seminars, but there was that we didn't see. Um, he's like, hey, hey, you know, I should give to this history. You know, come on down to a dinosaur adventure land. Give to this man. Give, give, give. The horse leech had two daughters crying, give, give. God is their belly. Romans chapter 16. Verses 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and, con and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. <laughs> what doctrine have you learned? The doctrine of devils? Justifying sin? Huh? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and mind are these things, see? And by good words and fair speeches, <coughs> my ears itch. Yeah, I got a little tickling. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter two, verses fifteen on to verse nineteen. Let's let's not forget during these days. You, you can find all kinds of excuses to skirt 
the scriptures. But the fact is, dear brother, sister, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, in whom is Hymenius, Hymenius, and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, and no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, that is Jesus Christ. See, Satan comes on, comes around with a foundation made of sand. Now, Peter. <laughs> okay. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth stand sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Having this seal. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 on to 22. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanius and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, a man, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians. We're not going to the obvious. You ought to know that one by heart. What's the obvious? Pause the video. Uh, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Okay, that's the obvious. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Okay, fine. Fine. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Fine, we'll read it. In whom ye, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that earnest, with that seal with that Holy Spirit of promise, capital S, that's the earnest. The Lord Himself. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Once saved, always saved. Which is the earnest, there's earnest right there, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, under the praise of His glory. Ephesians 4.30 Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, capital S, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Catching way of the body of Christ. Ephesians 5.29 on to verse 32. Now, context in marriage, but the deeper thing here. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. And that's not talking about a building. The body of Christ. Prove that to you. Okay? For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. We are espoused unto Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Revelation 22. Let's finish this with the end. Revelation 22. Verses 20 and 21. He that testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. 
Even so, come. <laughs> Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The end. If the Lord will that guy tarry till he comes, what is that to thee? Follow him. You follow him. You know, brethren, a lot of you, a lot of you might be experiencing things like, you know, people who you thought were brothers are being made manifest that they're not. This is this is the sign of the times, dear brethren. You keep your nose in the book, in the scriptures. Rightly divided, of course. Of course. And fear the Lord and not man. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching this if you do. Hopefully this has helped you and edified and encouraged some of you. Okay? Um, things are just going to get worse. They are getting worse. They are getting worse. Be careful what you wish for too, by the way. Because you might just get it. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Uh, we love you. Thank you for your prayers. Uh, do keep the brethren in prayer. And each other. And we will see you, Lord willing, in the next video. Bye-bye.